for today's purposes, uh, I'm going to walk you through um, what was our journey in Dallas ISD towards college and career readiness. And I'm going to tell you, obviously, we're not there yet. We, we still are making good progress, but there's some things we need to show up along the way. But I want to just say real quick to my team, the team of Dallas ISD that are here, stand up real quick if you recognize them. So I know there's several contenders. Because in the end, like, you know how it is, if your team doesn't work well, you're not going to get very far uh, very fast. And so I appreciate the team. But ultimately, um, you know, we're making progress, and uh, I'll just walk through some, some pieces of work, streams of work that we're doing to start out. So this visual really provides you just a quick look at, you know, we want to be a premier urban district. We've made good progress in the last six, seven years in Dallas ISD, but currently we're not finished like you're not finished. Uh, but on the uh, right side, you can see most of that visual, but most of the visual represents some of the work streams we, we focused on last year, which we're really developing like our North Star. What are we trying to, where are we trying to go? Well, we want our students to have, we want to force them to graduate, because we want to know when our students leave our doors, what do we expect them to be able to, be able to do, to be able to know and uh, be able to interact and, and socialize into society, into the workforce, into college, etc. So we focus on a portrait of a graduate. And then we thought, okay, if the portrait of a graduate is a North Star, we also have to think about then the people who are most impacting our, our graduates, our North Star, our teachers. So then we also worked on simultaneously to that, simultaneously to that vision of a classroom. What does a classroom look like? What should it look like? What do we want teachers to be able to do and help our students to be successful? Uh, and then, of course, we also were part of Holt's work night as well as Garland. Uh, and the work we did this year, part of it was developing the, leader, the leadership definition. So understanding what do we expect of our leaders? In Dallas ISD, and what we want them to be able to do, um, and the skills they should possess as they do this work. So quickly, as we turn to the journey a little bit, uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go clockwise from number one to number two on the right, and kind of move around the circle. But ultimately, uh, as we develop those uh, work streams of work that I showed a moment ago on the slide, those were done across many divisions. And you, you know, Dallas ISD is 140,000 students plus, and it's 22,000. Employees. So you can imagine what a big monster it is to really systematize a lot of the things we're trying to do. So we had a cross-divisional team work all year long to develop these uh, streams of work that are listed, the portrait of the graduate, a uh, vision of the class classroom, and leadership definition, because that really helps us to substantiate where, where, where are we headed. So as you look at number two, we also recognize that we weren't doing a good job across the entire vertical organization. You know, we were, like somebody said earlier, we we're focused on, on the 12th grade year. That's like the autopsy, right? It's too late. We've got to focus earlier and get to our kids earlier. So even at the ninth grade, it's not soon enough. So our counseling team has done great work, and uh, some other staff members have really jumped in to figure out how do we touch kids along the way with meaningful experiences and considerations for their future so they can get a little, at least whet their appetite on what they want to do. And then the other piece sitting in there is what we call CCAP, College and Career Advising Program. So we have, we've had college access providers for quite some time now, over the last several years. Predominantly, they're serving seniors and, some, and juniors. Well, we've scaled it. We've uh, actually increased the dollar amount by fourfold. Um, for about $11 million a year, we're going to have college and career advising for all students grade 9 through 12. So we're going to have dedicated staff doing that, supporting our counseling team to make sure they can do it in, in uh, tandem to be successful for our kiddos. And then going to uh, sort of the down the, the right side. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's, I guess it's not. Go to number three. It, it is fully. Any motion there. But number three talks about um, a few things, sixth grade honors. So about a year or two ago, a pretty smart chief said, and it wasn't me, so I'm just going to say that. But uh, she brought to the table this idea, this policy that said basically any student who achieves meets or masters on STAR would automatically be populated into honors in sixth grade. Because what we were finding is when we looked at the data, many kids who were doing well in fifth grade were sort of opting out, or teachers or counselors weren't seeing them having the need to be in honors. So we have a huge number of students now that are ent entering honors automatically without saying, hey, mom, dad, you want your child there. Actually, mom and dad have to opt out if they want the child out. And how many parents are going to say to you in school, I want my child to take a lesser path? Not too many. So that's been great. Um, we are re re uh, reimagining TSIA, which sits right in the sixth grade honors piece. You know, we did uh, TSIA for all seniors last year, and it kind of it failed, let's be honest with you, because schools had a window, and the window was really big, and every time we reminded them, they said, oh, we're going to get to it, we're going to get to it. The schools that had principals were really focused on it, they got to it, it was okay, but guess what? All we were doing was weighing kids on the scale, if you will. We were not training them along the way. So, like, 
We have, we have the Texas College Bridge courses. Take those students, put them aside. But the rest of the students who were taking TSIA for all, if they weren't yet college ready for an assessment, we weren't doing a good job because we weren't training them well. We had it ready, but their schools weren't using them well. So we're taking a different approach this year. We're going to embed it into uh, English 3 and Algebra 2. And I've heard 22 school districts doing that. And, uh, for, and obviously, that'll be embedded. They'll take an assessment at the end of the school year. So it'll be really right in line with what we should give it to them. And then secondly, for seniors, we'll give it, we have two small windows in the senior year that the school leadership, school leadership is committed to saying, you know what, that's more logical. Let's make the window small. Let's train them right before that window, at least, at least some, a little bit, and then we'll assess them. And then the last piece I do want to share um, is just the CCR dashboard. And obviously, that, that ties directly to uh, part of why some of us we're all here today, right? Data matters. You know, it's one thing to take some actions and do some things, but if you're not using data and you head in the wrong direction because you're not using data and you really don't know the path that your journey should be on, you're not, we're not going to get there, right? And so uh, we as a district started with a dashboard about a year and a half ago. It's been very helpful. It's really aimed at uh, helping in grades 9, 12 with accountability, but also looking at sixth graders, making sure sixth graders, fifth graders going into sixth are in those honors courses as they talked about. So that's been critical, and obviously what Eric has talked a little bit about, and we'll talk about later on this next meeting, is it's important to have data to make sure we do the work we need to with really informed efforts. And then this, we use a lot with our principals, and this visual just helps principals understand, like, you know, what, we call this the rules of the game, really, so principals understand, like, what's going to trigger accountability? Because when I show up on their campus, they're probably going, why are you here? What do you want? What do you want from me? Why do you take my hour and a half, right? So we often start with this visual because we want them to know, like, hey, we're here to help you, and these rules, these are the rules of the game. And if you let us help you follow these rules, you're going to get further, faster with the outcomes that you expect. And so we use this as a basis for our conversations, but also we help use this, the, the purple part of it, that we call the money ball. That's HB3, right? So we're really doing a lot of teaching as we go to the campus and helping them understand, not only we focus on account accountability, because it's going to help you, and more importantly, help the kiddos, but secondly, we're going to try to get some HB3 funding so we can do some things we want to do so you as a principal don't have to say to us, we need more allocations, we need more FTEs, we need more money. We can generate money if we do it the right way. And then uh, this, is, this is a visual we use a lot as well that just kind of tells our principals, like, you know what, in Dallas ISD, we have the framework for anything we need to provide for students, whether students want AP, IB, magnets, early college high schools, P-TECH, or career technical ed, and we have career institutes for that. We have every single op option we need for our kiddos, and what we try to explain to them is, there's something for everybody. We need to make sure we get every student on track for that path that they want, whether it be for now or even for the future. So they might say, you know what? I'm gonna go to career institutes, but after I graduate from high school, I'm gonna go to Dallas College and get some more certification certifications, and I wanna get a degree, right? So we really want to set them up for the success, but we're trying to paint the picture for our principals too that this buffet of options is here, but we need you to help us get kids on the path to these options. Um, so about seven years ago, we launched P-TECH at Dallas ISD, um, and we've had some significant success, and you know we're, we're clearly not there yet either. We have some strong systems set up. But we had our first cohort uh, three years ago, and that first cohort, we had in the middle, the number you can't can barely see is 72% of our students earned an associate degree, you know, basically their senior year as they graduated. So we were really pleased about that. That represented 628 students. A year ago, we had just over 900, 919 students earn an associate degree. And then this year, we're on track to have a little over 900 pending the data. Where's Dallas College at? Who represents Dallas College now? So first of all, thank you, Dr. Slaco. Second of all, we need the data. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> now, I bug my team like crazy. I'll keep saying, hey, we want to know how many how many associate degrees we have. And Cheryl will say, and Cheryl's here as well. She'll say, okay, Dr. Glass, we got to wait for all the data to come in. So I hound her like crazy, but if you wonder why she's hounding you, it's because I hound her. Water's running downhill for sure. All right, that looks good. But uh, I think that the gist of this slide is really around, um, you know, we, a couple, three years ago, stood up a career institute to add to our career and technical ed work. You know, we had CTE programs at high schools, but as you know, they're not very efficient because you might have 75 kids in a CTE pathway program of study 
Well, when you look at teacher allocations, et cetera, it makes it hard to run programs sometimes. So we went to the quadrant model in Dallas ISD. And currently, we have three career, ins career institutes, hubs, if you will, and we'll have four in, in the next uh, two years from now. And then the last, the, so the other big piece that I want to share with you, and we're going to talk a little bit about, well, I talked about TSI and how we're going to sort of reposition our efforts there to English 2, uh, English 3 and Algebra 2. Um, but I'm going to jump down to uh, UT on ramps. We have increased the uh, commitment of schools from 11 to 16 this year, which we're really excited about, which is another, it's a low stakes way for students to get college experience and ideally get college credit as well with, with UT Austin. So we're excited about that. Obviously, partner with uh, Dallas County Promise, they've kind of been the impetus for a lot of us to push us along the way. While sometimes we get sick of them, sorry, Eric, I'm going to say in public, sometimes we get sick of you, we appreciate you as well because in the end, it's right for kids, right? And so we appreciate uh, the work that's being done. And I talked about our, our uh, college advising, college and career advising, 9 and 12, so that's been an expansion. And then the last piece is um, middle school honors. And I will say this. We recognize that we were struggling to effectively advise kids across the continuum of grade levels. So what we did this year is we spent about a year working with a vendor to develop a curriculum that is Dallas ISD specific, that speaks directly to the programs, pathways that we offer, so that our students in seventh grade, every single seventh grader is gonna go through this course that has Dallas ISD specific programs, it's gonna reference the schools the programs are at, it's gonna talk about the occupations that, that they'll lead to, and that's being launched this school year, so we're excited about that as well. And then I'll be a little bit redundant, and I won't say a lot, but I've already talked about the first bullet, if you will, there on TSIA, the revision of how we're moving along. Uh, we heard about Texas College Bridge, and I think it's a meaningful program. We just got to do better in Dallas to make sure it, it, it makes the traction that we all expect. Uh, and and I, I agree with the sentiments. I mean, it, you've got to have the, the adults engaged. You can't just put kids on a computer and expect it's going to work. That's not realistic, not very often. Uh, then I talked about the senior, the TSIA for all. Now this gets to the heart of, uh, I really think what Eric, part of what he has to say for today too is, about a year and a half ago, Jamie's here. Jamie, raise your hands real quick. Jamie, did, she's been working on this uh, CCR dashboard and uh, like feverishly, and it's helped us a lot because we're really able to get school, let schools access it, look at their data, and know where they stand with regard to TSIA, SAT, ACT, IP, uh, IB, AP, and know whether they trigger accountability and kind of know which students then they can focus in on to help students um, be college ready as they leave our doors. So that's been phenomenal for us. But also with that, so, so long came commit, or Dallas County Promise and the CM tool, right? And I'm excited about the, the Salesforce uh, tool because I think one of the problems we face, and I don't think it's just Dallas ISD, but if I'm advising a student, then the next thing you know, another staff member comes in and is talking to the student, and a third staff member is talking to the student, there's really no record of conversation to help understand what's the chronology of the conversation. Really, what does that student want to do in the end? With Salesforce, we can do that. So when Eric pitched that to me, I was very excited about the idea of being able to use that information along the way because it does kind of paint the picture of a student's journey beyond just having data. So I'm excited about that. And of course, uh, the new piece here on the bottom, which we will actually then be the owners of that Salesforce tool and uh, be able to really manipulate the data and do what we need to with it. All right, just a minute. There, Eric also talked about data architecture. So as he was talking about it up here, I was over there going, he just stole my slide. So Eric, you're welcome, there's a the slide. But essentially, you can't see it all, but ultimately I think the idea is that we want to get real-time data. There are some data sets that we all know we can't get quickly, and if we don't have data quickly, we can't move quickly, we can't help students quickly. So I think the whole idea is that we have the data flow into us quickly, we can bring it from our data warehouse to whether it be green light or student information systems, but it's all going to feed to where we need to, to help work with our students most effectively. And then here are a couple of screenshots of what Jamie has put together, and I'm pretty impressed with what she's done. I mean, the top visual just gives you a look at, for example, the green and gray bar. That represents the total number across uh, Dallas ISD of um, students in fifth to going to sixth grade. Who, who met me and were at meets or masters and should be in an honors course. So we send this information, when the schools can dive into the information, they can see exactly who's in honors courses and who needs to be, so we can most meaningfully get them positioned into a course for success. And then you can see another data set at the bottom that speaks a little, a little bit about um, college readiness. I'm not gonna get into the details of it, but I think what you can see is we're being very intentional about gathering data that's gonna help us act. 
And then this next slide is an example, of, obviously, is a promising tool, and we are very grateful for it because it helps us make decisions as well. I think what's really important, too, is we're going to look at grades 9, 12 with this case management tool down the road, and that's going to help us be um, really help the students with, with advising and help them get on the path they expect to be on. And then a few, a few quick points as we wrap up, and again, I'm sorry you can't read that, but um, I think first, what I talked about it with Eric several months ago is, well, how do we figure out which users we want to have access, right? So we have to figure out who are the power users, who's going to make sense of these tools, who's going to be interacting with these tools, and let them, let them give us feedback on what they want to see and how they want it um, designed. And so that speaks to the second one, right? User centered design. And then the third bullet really speaks to um, talking about personalization, right? I mean, every district has its own way of operating. When I heard that, I mean, Travis, what's his name, right, Travis? He said, you know, he's a facilitator. I thought to myself, well, who, who's that in our, our district, right? Every district has a different design. We're all headed up to the same goal. And so as I think about this as a case management tool, I think it's really about how do we choose to use it person by person, district by district. And I think that the most important thing is to have coherence in across schools and across the district so that uh, there's a common vernacular and a common operating principle around how we use these tools. And as I wrap up, I say thank you for your time and uh, Eric, you take it from here.